So I've been asked by a handful of people how I've set up H3 VR multiplayer, how I've gotten that going, how I've gotten that running and all that stuff. Uh, it is a fairly straightforward process. And so I'm going to try and make a very, very quick tutorial on how I've personally got it set up. Um, depending on how other people that you may be um, joining have set theirs up, you may need to modify the process slightly, uh, but this is just how I've been doing it. So, and it's been working for me quite well. So yeah, there is a quick disclaimer around this as well due to the nature of how the mod works you are going to need to set up a situation set up a, a an environment where you'll essentially be allowing direct connection to your pc from other devices across the wider internet um as that stands that is a very risky thing to do um that there, there are a number of security risks that come alongside that so yeah just be fully aware of it. Recognize that if you don't know who you're connecting to um, on the other end, if you set it up in a in a way that doesn't give you the ability to control who's on the network sort of thing, um, whether deliberately or inadvertently that people can spread malware to you if, if people have either uh, bad actors or they've miskept their PC or whatever. So yeah, I would have, if you're not the system administrator of your network, have a chat to them, whoever has administrator privileges on the network, talk to them, talk to about potentially isolating your computer from other local devices on the network. So just block access to that as long as it doesn't interrupt anything internet, as long as it's, if it blocks other things on the network, then that will be a good way to isolate your PC because stuff like malware loves to hang about in random devices like printers smart speakers and yeah getting getting rid of that can take forever and it's really not worth the risk so just fair warning know who you're connecting to on the other end and just be aware keep keep your wits about you because this is this does involve a, de a degree of security risk that being said what you'll want to do is first get some form of mod manager i have personally been using thunderstorm mod manager and I found it relatively easy and straightforward. Just remove that real quick. I've been finding it fairly easy and straightforward to use. You can use whatever mod manager you like. There, I believe there's also R2 mod manager out there as well, or you could even you could even do it manually. Um, but I just find uh, Thunderstorm mod manager to be fairly straightforward. So you want to create a new, not select a profile. You can either select default or you can set up a new profile. I've been doing uh, different profiles for different characters with multiplayer. Uh, but we'll create a new um, profile called multiplayer. Create, select profile, select it up there. Get mods, H3MP by VIP, download 5.1. This is going to be very quick because it's already cached because I've already got it installed elsewhere. But that will install the actual multiplayer mod itself. And it will also install Bepin EX, which is basically the modding framework for pretty much all mods for H3VR. Um, and it's that simple. The, the installation is very, very straightforward. Uh, we will come back to this because we'll need to edit some config files. But yeah, from that, from that point of view, it's actually very, very straightforward. The next step that you'll need to do is install some form of VPN. Now, I've been using zero tier. This is just what I've been using. I find it relatively straightforward and easy to use. Um, if you've ever used something like LogMe and Hamachi, it basically operates the same way. It creates a local, a virtual local network for other computers to connect to. So that it has the, the effect of being connected to the same local network. Um, you can set up something like port forwarding if you know how to do that. But I just personally think that the security risks involved in port forwarding just do not do not outweigh. They, sorry, they far outweigh the security risk. Far outweigh the the any potential benefit that port forwarding may have. Um, so yeah, but if if you have any other service like this, that's uh, that's fair enough. Um, depending on who you're connecting to on the other end as well, if you're hosting or joining, um, you may need to modify this step to use whatever service they are using. Because yeah. Um, different services will operate in different ways and they won't connect to each other. They won't intermesh. Um, but this is just what I've been using and it's been fairly straightforward for me. Uh, first thing you want to do is 
download it. Just download the service. You can do it for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, pretty much all every bloody operating system under the sun it'll it'll work for. It's fairly lightweight, it's fairly good and nice. Once it's downloaded, installed, all that fun stuff, you can then launch it. And it will just sit down here in your tray very nicely. Oh, I've got two instances running. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> there you go. Um, but yes, just right click and you will have all this stuff. You won't be connected to a network like I am, but yeah. So it'll just sit down here in your tray and it will, it will do its thing. Um, what you'll also need to do as well, once it's downloaded, is sign up for some form of account. And this will allow you to, especially if you're hosting, you'll need to sign up for account and this will allow you to manage a, a network. If you're joining, you won't necessarily need a, a if any sort of um, account, but I just highly, I highly recommend it because it will be fairly easy to do stuff and host if you do want to do that. So I already have an account, so I will log in. Cool. And you will have nothing here. <laughs> uh, but you'll want to, you'll be able to create a network. And if you create a network, it will generate a random network ID for it. I'll blank this out in the video because yeah. Um, and it'll give it a name as well. Cool. From there, you can click on it. You can rename it, do whatever you like. It's going to have a bunch of stuff in here that I am mostly going to blank out because it's going to have a lot of network stuff as part of it. Um, and then you'll see down the bottom, the main thing here is members. So no devices have joined the network. Fair enough. This network ID that you have is going to be what you plug in and give to everyone else. So you can copy it. You'll also need to join this yourself. So copy it, go down to your zero tier program, join new network. It's going to want to do a 16 digit network ID, paste it in and click join. And that's it. So you'll most likely see it's going to set up a separate um, network sort of network device because yeah, that, that allows you to just do security stuff and control it as its own separate network adapter. You want to go yes. And cool you'll be connected to the network and you'll see it here. You can also enable or disable it, yada, yada, yada. And then you can disconnect and all that fun stuff. From there, if you're the host as well, you'll be able to see that one device has joined the network that will also will pop up down here. You can manage it, all that stuff. You want to authorize the member on the network so I allow it to all do that fun stuff. And yeah, you'll be able to see any managed IPs and stuff. You'll also be able to see the physical IP. So probably be aware of that. That's, also, that's not a fun thing to really see. Um, but yeah. So from there, if you are hosting, or actually or even if, if you are hosting, you'll, this will be where you jump in. Um, you want to copy this managed IP address down here. Go to back to your bond manager, go edit config, go h3mp config.json, open the file. I open it in a separate editor just because I think that's easier. I have VS Code. From there, you'll want to, whether you're hosting or joining, it's just easiest to paste in the IP address here. So, whatever it be, 172. Yada, 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 blah, 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 all that fun stuff. Usually just keep the port and the max client count to default and then change your username to what your username is. So mine would be Ethereum 101. Save it, close it, and that's it. You will need to give that IP address and if you change the port number, the port number to anyone you intend to connect to alongside the network ID. So you'll need to give people the network ID and the managed IP of the host. And then that's basically it. They'll need to modify their config as well if they're joining. And yeah, that is basically it. From there, I'll throw up a probably a flash screen of, of what the wrist menu looks like in game. Um, from there, once you load in game, so you go to the mod manager, start a modded client. You can't just do it 
through Steam, you have to do it through the mod manager because otherwise it won't load the mods. Go into HVR, look at the wrist menu. If you are hosting, just click host. If you're joining, just click join and it will just use the config file. Um, if you modify the config file while the game is um, already running um, to change who you want to do on the fly, uh, there should be a little button in settings to just update config and it will just reread the config, reset the mod and all that fun stuff. So yeah, uh, I believe that's everything. If you have any questions, I'm easiest to reach in Discord, but you could also just leave a comment on this video and I will most likely get to it as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, make sure if you're running if you're running with multiple mods, there are some mods that just do not play nicely with the multiplayer mod um, at all. Um, so just be aware of that. Test mods out before you go for any serious runs. Uh, there are some limitations of the mod, um, so you can't interact with the same sort of what's the word the same gun as someone else currently. So you can't set up, say, like a machine gun nest and have one person reloading, one person firing sort of thing. We can't quite do just that just yet, but the multiplayer mod is under constant development. So who knows, at, at some point in the near future, we may have that functionality, which would be pretty cool. Honestly, it would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah. So yeah, I think that's about it. If you have any questions, let me know. And yeah, happy, happy multiplayer playing.